First thing we'll start with is lifting the car. Then, we'll notice I was on the passenger side of the car. We'll move under and get a good view so you can kind of figure out what everything is. All right. This piece right here is what you're gonna spin. And right here is where it's gonna drain from. Mine was fairly easy to twist, but you'll just twist it counterclockwise, start letting it drain. Um, be sure that you have the surge tank cap off, otherwise it'll stop about halfway through. But now we wait. While we're waiting for that to drain, um, we'll just go over. Uh, I highly recommend just going ahead, if you're flushing the system, and getting a new thermostat as well. Uh, this one I paid for like 15 bucks. It's just worth it. Um, I got a cheap one due to con constraints and I'm doing some modifications next year. So honestly, this one's probably not going to be in next year. But that's just a personal recommendation. If you're flushing the system, go ahead, spend the extra money and get a new thermostat. So now that it's drained to a drip, I've repositioned my drip pan. And we're just going to take off these two bolts that are holding in the thermostat housing. And then we'll go ahead and change our thermostat. Alright, so we have all the bolts loosened, or both of them. Uh, they're just 10 milliliter bolts, you haven't figured out already. They're fairly easy to come out. Be careful, obviously, don't burn yourself. Plain and simple. New one goes in the same way the old one came out, just like this. You'll notice the rubber gasket that's fitted around the edge. It's recommended that you just go ahead and put some nice fresh lube or coolant on that as lubricant before you put it back in there. So now we're about to go ahead and install this back in. Last thing is to go ahead and torque down both of the bolts down to 11 foot-pounds of torque. And then once we do that we'll go ahead and we'll get on with the flush. So we'll go ahead and we'll retighten this Crazy tight, just hand tighten, and then we'll go ahead and refill. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and refill to the top. Then we're going to run the car and let this water kind of circulate. This is clean, drinkable tap water. And I know some of you argue that you need to use distilled water only, but you're fucking wrong. So we're going to use clean, drinkable tap water. Once it's filled to the fill mark and it stays there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start the car. Then we're going to let it warm, top it off just a little bit until it's at the full mark, and then let it circulate. Now, mine, because of a water pump failure and some cooling issues, it's pretty much puked as much dex cool as it can out, so I only anticipate one flush. You, however, need to do it as many times as you have to until the water is starting to drain clear. So after we're done flushing, we are ready to fill. And I know there's plenty of different arguments on what to fill with, why, but you can do whatever you want with your Corvette. I'm going to use a mix of Dexcool and water. Complete 50-50% mix. One thing I want to point out is, as mentioned before, I had cooling issues. So I went ahead and changed the thermostat ahead of time. Um, you don't have to do it that way. Especially if you want to keep yours or if you want to take yours out and run it open when you're doing the flush. That's fine too. I just did it this way because I knew I was only going to have to flush it once. And however, once I do flush it on my last time, I am going to open this up a little bit to make sure all that pours out as well. And that's it. The last thing I will note is that mine, I can only get about a full gallon of Dexcool in it. And probably about three quarters of a gallon of water in it. So I didn't flush out nearly as much as I'd hoped to, but it's close enough and it's good enough. And I've checked around and... It will do. So everything's topped off and everything works now. So good luck with yours.